ruling elite. Morgan Changarai, a former mine worker, rose to prominence as a union activist in Zimbabwe in the mid 1980s. In that role, he positioned himself as the country's leading opposition figure. Roseanne Lawson is a policy director with Trans Africa Forum in Washington. He was Secretary General of um, the Zimbabwean Congress of Trade Unions, and through that process, I think, really cemented himself as a civil society leader. Changarai led a series of crippling strikes against higher taxes in the late 1990s, forcing President Robert Mugabe's government to cancel the measures. In 1999, his trade confederation split from Mr. Mugabe's ruling ZANU-PF party. An expert says the party he formed promoted democracy and the rights of the unemployed. Amira Woods is with the Institute for Policy Studies in Washington. That creates a platform for, uh, f for opposition, a platform for change um, that very much underpins now what is a political party, the movement for democratic change. Within months of splitting from the ruling party, the MDC defeated a government referendum on constitutional reforms, which included allowing the seizure of white-owned farms without compensation. Throughout his political career, Changarai has been an outspoken critic of President Mugabe. Well, I think any rational Zimbabwean will realize that uh, Mugabe is, 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 is acting as a lone ranger. Uh, I think he has just sidelined his cabinet. Parliament is, has been dissolved, so uh, he's acting alone. You know. Political analysts say Changarai's criticism of Mr. Mugabe and the government made him and members of his party targets of harassment, violence, and even assassination attempts. Lawson says he was arrested and charged several times with treason, but each time the cases were dismissed. Trade unionists are, are the first to be beaten, are the first to be arrested, and I think that actually really prepared him to be able to stay the course that he's been able to stay um, in Zimbabwe. Changarai lost to Mr. Mugabe in the 2002 presidential election. But there were widespread allegations Mr. Mugabe used violence to intimidate voters and rigged the contest by manipulating voting documents. Changarai has lost some support within his party for what some call his authoritarianism. He was accused of ordering some of his supporters to attack party dissidents. He appointed his own candidate without a vote to head the party's women's wing. In March 2007, Changarai emerged from jail badly beaten. He told reporters that police had assaulted defenseless people. Several dozen opposition leaders were hospitalized. The analyst Wood says the political violence was widespread and drew international condemnation. It is that sort of broad base of people who are discontent with the economic crisis in, in Zimbabwe, with people who are pushing for greater political openness. In March, Changarai again challenged Mr. Mugabe for the presidency. His popularity and message gained new support after Zimbabweans faced hyperinflation and years of food and fuel shortages that plagued the country's deteriorating economy. Earlier this year, Changarai told VOA TV that Mr. Mugabe has divided people and ruined the country. Mugabe is now not only a president of the country, he is the institution that has run our country for the last 30 years. And look at, look at the results. Unprecedented levels of decay and misery and repression. Um, so he should be accountable. The outcome of the 2008 election was delayed for weeks as Changarai declared himself the winner and accused Mr. Mugabe of withholding the results to stay in power. Political analysts say Changarai's future depends on the outcome of the election and if he wins, whether he can bring rival factions together. Chris Simpkins, VOA News.